Hi, my name is Rachel Painter and I'm an extension agent here in Rutherford County. Today we'll be talking about vegetable gardening. To grow a vegetable garden, you'll need to take proper care of that garden. And that starts from the very first moment that you start planning it out. Plan ahead and research before you even get started so that you can be successful. You'll need to prepare the soil, sow the seeds, or plant the transplants. And you'll need to water and weed. Watering and weeding definitely take the most time out of these tasks. And this list may seem small, but it will actually take a lot of time and effort, so be ready before you get started. What do plants need? They need sunlight, water, appropriate temperatures, and soil and nutrients, and we'll go through each of these. For sunlight, they need about six to eight hours of sunlight a day, and they must be able to have sunlight to be able to produce their own food. They have to take nutrients, water, and sunlight to turn it into the food that they can use to grow your fruits and vegetables that you like to enjoy. So make sure before you plan out where you're putting your garden that it actually will receive six to eight hours. For water, they need about one inch of water per week for vegetable gardens. The key is to give them the right amount at the right time. So you can't give them an excess of water one day and then have them dry for a week. So make sure that you're spacing out your watering and being aware of when it's raining. Remember that also, plants uptake their water from their root system, not through their leaves. So make sure you're watering the soil and not the plant itself. Seeds also need a certain temperature to germinate and grow. So make sure that you are um, putting them out at a certain right time so that they will receive that temperature that they need to germinate. You can see here that seed is germinating and it's growing roots. And that must mean that it's in a, tem a temperature that it needs to be able to germinate and grow. Many seeds actually don't need sunlight to get started. They only need sunlight once they start sprouting. So once you start seeing these cotyledons show up, that is their first leaves that will start to produce its own sugars. Plants also need good soil. And what is good soil? For a vegetable garden, a good soil is one that is sufficient in depth, nutrients, and drainage. A good soil is sufficient in depth at about a foot, so 12 inches or more of soil is good for vegetable gardens. And they need this area and space so that their roots can search out nutrients and air, and they can also anchor that plant down. A good soil must have a good supply of nutrients available. So if you have been reusing the same soil year after year, you will need to really apply some fertilizer or nutrients in some other form as an organic matter or compost. A good soil must also have proper drainage. We don't want the roots to be sitting in water and rotting away um, from sitting in that water. So they need to be able to uptake the water in a sufficient time before it drains away, but we also don't want them sitting in water all the time. When you're planning out your garden, the best piece of advice I can give you is to start small. So don't plan your garden too big that you can't take care of it once it starts growing. You also need to think about what you like to eat. So don't plant something if you don't like to eat it. You wanna make sure you're going to enjoy what you're harvesting. When's a plant? Look at your calendar and see what, is, uh, what should be going in the ground right now. Right now, it's the beginning of May and we're starting out uh, with our warm season vegetable gardens right now. What is the difference? We have cool season and warm season crops. Cool season crops grow better in our spring and fall temperatures here in Tennessee. They can withstand temperatures below freezing. Warm season crops cannot. They will be killed off by frost or freezing temperatures and they grow best in our late spring and summer temperatures. Here in Murfreesboro, our frost free dates are April 24th for our spring and October 5th in the fall. These are our 10% chance dates or probability dates. This means that there's a 10% chance that it will freeze or frost after April 24th and a 10% chance that it would freeze before October 5th. Our cool season crops are our leafy greens. They're the ones that you think about like lettuce and cabbage and spinach. Here's a list of those leafy green crops and other cool season crops. This is not an extensive list and there are more lists on our publications online and you can just type in cool season vegetable crops UT and they should come right up. Cool season crops are more shallow rooted and susceptible to drought. Um, they can be planted in the early spring and fall. Some do best in the spring or the fall. So look that up and see 
uh, which ones you're wanting to plant. Our warm season crops are those bright colored crops that we think about eating in the middle of summer. Our peppers and tomatoes and cucumbers and squash. Here's a list of warm season crops. You can see here our melons and okra, peas even, pumpkins, all of those are our warm season crops and they need warm temperatures in order to grow and mature properly. Some need even warmer temperatures, like our sweet potatoes, our okra, watermelon, and cantaloupe. Those should be planted out about two weeks after that spring frost date. Seeds versus transplants. There's a lot of confusion about whether I should just plant from seed or if I should grow my own transplants or purchase transplants. And the main reason transplants are used is to reduce the time to harvest in the garden. The main crops that are transplanted are those longer season crops that take longer to mature. Some seeds are hard to germinate due to temperature or other requirements. For example, peppers would be hard to direct seed because of high, high soil temperatures that are required to get them to germinate. They're also a longer season crop, so we would want to start with transplants for those. For planting, if you're planting by seed, you need to make sure you're planting that seed at a depth of two to three times that seed diameter. For transplants, we want to put them in the ground at the same level as the soil on their current container, so we don't want to bury them in the soil. The only plant that you can do that with is tomatoes because they can put out more roots along their main stalk. So you can uh, sometimes plant those a little bit deeper than the soil line on their current container so that they will put out more roots and be more stable. When you're buying transplants, you want to make sure that you're getting a healthy plant to bring home. You want to look at leaf color, the root health or the age of those roots, the inner nodes and the distance between those nodes, and for pests and diseases, we don't want to bring home an unhealthy healthy plant that is uh, ridden with pests and diseases into our garden. The yellow leaves on this lettuce transplant in the picture behind um, is likely yellow because it has been dried out as it was growing and it probably ran low on nitrogen. So we don't want to bring that home into our garden. A long distance between internodes can indicate that a transplant was grown with too little light or too much nitrogen. You want to make sure that the roots are healthy and white. Brown roots are not healthy and you don't want to bring that home. How do gardeners uh, select what variety to grow? When you're looking at uh, these transplants, you'll see that they will have names on them and those varieties tell us different things about what to expect from that plant. Gardeners choose different varieties based on tradition or experience. Maybe they grew up growing a certain kind of tomato with their grandparents and they want to continue growing that same one. They also might grow uh, a certain variety based on disease resistance. You can see on uh, transplants, on their uh, cards, they will ship, they will have uh, disease resistance codes and you want to be aware of what those mean so that you uh, know what you're getting and maybe you uh, don't want to fight a certain disease in your garden. So just try to find one that might be resistant to that. Gardeners might also choose a certain variety based on flavor. They might like a certain tomato over a different one because of how it tastes. The appearance might also be important to some people. I am growing a purple bell pepper this year just because it's something different. So maybe you have some extra space in your garden and you want to grow something that's fun and different than what you've ever grown before. There are many different factors that play into why someone might choose a certain variety over another one. Maybe you have some different input. If you're not sure what you want to grow, you can look into different trial data to help you make a decision. Certain uh, trials go on across the United States and one of those is All American Selections. All American Selections has different criteria such as earliness, disease or pest resistance, color and flavor, novel forms or unique forms, yield and flowering season. And these are on a zero to five scale. So you can see how they rate against uh, these standards. We also here in Tennessee have the Tennessee Home Variety Trials and you can actually be a part of that yourself. And these are different trials that we send out to citizen scientists or home gardeners like yourself and they grow these plants and then they send back data to us. So you can see how it uh, grew across the state of Tennessee and how people liked it. Harvesting, you need to understand the days to harvest and harvest signs so that you are picking at peak maturity. 
the dates to harvest here in this uh, table is showing you that certain vegetables take longer or shorter to become mature. And you wanna make sure that you're planting uh, with enough time to expect your harvest before it gets killed off by frost. So these are our cool season crops. We would want to make sure that we would harvest those before it got too warm. But on your warm season crops, you want to make sure that you're planting with enough time to harvest before they get killed off by frost in the fall. This is um, just another table about seeding times in the vegetable garden. So again, you would want to plant certain things in late spring or summer, and then others could be planted even later in the year because you would have plenty of time to harvest before they got killed off. Harvest signs. You wanna make sure that you're picking at peak maturity, which means that you don't want to leave them on that plant too long before they start to deteriorate. So for example, summer squash, a lot of people leave them on too long because they don't know that they're ready. Summer squash is uh, ready to harvest when the large end is one to two and one quarter inch in diameter. So make sure you're not leaving it on there too long so that when you're eating it, it is fresh and tender. And don't forget to enjoy your harvest. Make sure that you make a new recipe with that harvest or something fun and exciting to eat it with. Even invite your neighbors over and have a great dinner with your harvest, things like that to get everyone involved. And you can also get them involved in the planting of the garden itself. They can um, help you in your garden and it makes it a lot more fun when you involve children or grandkids in the garden and just get everyone involved so that it's a fun journey. Also utilize your resources out there. You have an extension agent in every county that's ready to help you answer your questions. And there are many publications online, like this one, the Tennessee Home Vegetable Garden Calendar. And each month has different tasks and information for you to help you stay on track. And it also has dates uh, for you to be able to plant by and things like that. So make sure you check this out. If you would like to receive one of these garden uh, calendars, we still have some in our office and you can come by and get one. Just let us know that you need one and I'd be happy to help you get that. If you have any questions, don't uh, hesitate to reach out to me. This is my email address, and you can still reach us at our office at 615-898-7710. And again, if you want one of those vegetable garden calendars, just feel free to email me, and we can try to get you some of those until we run out. That's all we have today. Um, I hope you will keep joining us for these online trainings and meetings. Um, instead of having our farmer's market classes this year, we are doing these online. So I hope that you enjoy these. And again, let us know if you have any questions and call us at the Rutherford County Extension Office. Thank you.